dear friends once again it's hearty welcome all of you are known sexual reproduction in angiosperm involve many sequential events and all those sequential events all those series of events taking place during the sexual reproduction in angiosperms are categorized into three groups such as pre fertilization events second fertilization and third post fertilization events i think you might have understood the meaning of these three terms pre fertilization events pre fertilization events means the events or activities taking place before actual process of fertilization that is before actual union fusion of male and female gamete it is followed by fertilization that is actual union or fusion of male and female gamete and it is followed by certain changes known as post fertilization changes now all of you are aware in this entire topic we people have studied about the andrasium about the stamen about the development of anther pollen sac structure of pollen grain germination of pollen grain and development of male gametophyte development of male gametophyte that is the male gamete producing structure later on we have studied about the gynaecium carpel about the structure and types of ovules we have studied about the structure of anatropous ovule and in that anatropous ovule it occurs the development of female gametophyte that is female gamete containing structure means whatever different events whatever different activities we have studied that all belongs to the pre fertilization activities or pre fertilization we can say changes now here today we people have to study pollination and all the related aspects related with pollination pollination is also one of the pre fertilization i will say activity or pre fertilization event so let us start the study of this topic that is pollination pollination and all the different related aspects all the different related aspects with the pollination first of all let me tell you the pollination mechanism of pollination first of all discovered by scientist camerarius the name of scientist name of botanist he first of all discovered the mechanism of pollination now what is pollination i think this term is also not new for the students of 12th you know that pollination means simply it is the process of transfer of pollen grains it is the process of transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma let me write here at the blackboard briefly pollination is nothing but simply the transfer of pollen grains transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma from anther to the stigma now what is anther what is stigma what are pollen grains that everything we have studied in detail then and then once again here i am going to i am going to tell you briefly you know that suppose here is any flower just imagine in this flower suppose these are the stamens these are supposed to be the stamens you know that 
the stamen has upper small sac like structure known as the anther in which the pollen grains are born in which pollen grains are produced and here is supposed to be the carpe you know carpe we have already studied that this upper receptive point upper receptive part of carpe is known as stigma so very simple the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma is nothing but the pollination we can elaborate this definition transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of same flower or maybe another flower maybe of same plant maybe of another plant that all details we shall study slowly in the same topic but temporarily you just remember that pollination is nothing but simply transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma now i will say that the process of pollination the process of pollination is considered as prerequisite prerequisite for the process of fertilization try to understand pollination this process is considered as the prerequisite for the process of fertilization prerequisite means what it is the primary need for the process of fertilization primary need for the process of fertilization marathi madhe sangaycha jhalo tar फर्टिलाइजेशन घड़न एटी आधी क्या पॉलिनेशन हो विदाउट पॉलिनेशन फर्टिलाइजेशन इज ऑल्सो नॉट पॉसिबल हाउ एंड वाई वी नो दैट फर्टिलाइजेशन इज नथिंग बट द युनि ऑफ मेल गैमेट एंड फिमेल गैमेट अपने महत्ति है फर्टिलाइजेशन यर्थ युनि और फ्यूजन ऑफ मेल गैमेट एंड फिमेल गैमेट नाउ वी हेव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड that male gametes are produced in the pollen grain am i right male gametes are produced in the pollen grain and female gamete is produced within the ovule it means the male gamete and female gamete are produced at two different sites male gametes he pollen grain madhe taiyar hotat female gamete he ovule madhe female gametophyte madhe taiyar hotat म्हणजे मेल गॅमेट आणि फिमेल गॅमेट हे दोन एकमेकांपासून वेगवेगळ्या ठिकाणी असणाऱ्या स्ट्रक्चर्स मध्ये तयार होतात आणि त्यांना जर एकत्र आणायचं असेल फॉर द प्रोसेस ऑफ फर्टिलायझेशन तर सुरुवातीला पॉलिनेशन होणं गरजेचं आहे अँड दॅट्स वाय आय से दॅट पॉलिनेशन इज सपोज टू बी द प्री रिक्विजिट इट इज प्रायमरी नीड फॉर द प्रोसेस ऑफ फर्टिलायझेशन नाव we have to study about the types and sub types of pollination aplyala pollination che prakar ani upaprakarancha ya thikane abhyas karaycha hai pollination che prakar ani upaprakarancha abhyas karaycha the pollination is broadly divided into two main types pollination che don pramukh prakar padle jatat there are two main types of pollination such as first self pollination and second cross pollination self pollination and cross pollination there are two main types of pollination first of all we are going to discuss about the self pollination what is self pollination self pollination it is the transfer of pollen grains listen carefully it is the transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of same flower anther to the stigma of same flower or stigma of another flower but of same mother plant i am going to repeat self pollination it is the process of transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of same flower or 
stigma of another flower but on the same mother plant it means the self pollination involve either single flower or two flowers but that two flowers are of same mother plant that two flowers are of same mother plant it means we can say that self pollination it involve it involves only single plant it involves only single plant why the cross pollination it always involves two different plants it always involves two different plants about cross pollination we shall study after some time but first of all come back to the self pollination now as i repeatedly told you two times that self pollination it involves only single plant during self pollination it occurs the transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of same flower or we can say another flower but on the same mother plant now by drawing diagram and also i am going to tell you the sub types of self pollination the self pollination it is of two types self pollination it is of two types such as autogeny and jaitenogeny autogeny and jaitenogeny first of all let us talk about the autogeny here auto this word stands for self and gamos stands for the marriage now here don't consider its literal meaning marriage in the sense we can say crossing or pollination self marriage now what does it mean autogamy you know it is a sub type of self pollination autogamy is the transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of same flower from anther to the stigma of same flower why jaitenogeny it is the transfer of pollen grain from anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower but on the same mother plant here i am going to draw a little diagram for your correct understanding just imagine here is supposed to be any flowering plant just imagine here is a bisexual flower you know bisexual means the flower with both reproductive walls and rhizom gynaecium that is with both stamen and carpel now here i have shown one flower suppose it is a flower now here is another flower on the same mother plant i think you might have noticed here i have shown the stamens here is a carpel stamens here is a carpel now what is autogamy look autogamy means it is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of same flower anther to the stigma of same flower that is autogamy but when there is a transfer of pollen grain there is a transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of another flower but on the same mother plant it is called as the jaitenogamy i told you auto stands for self gamos stands for the marriage and here jaitenos this word stands for the neighbor and gamos stands for the marriage means jaitenogamy it involve two neighboring flowers two different flowers but of same mother plant so these are the two types of self pollination i think you might have understood that the self pollination involves only single plant now we people have to study about certain contrivances or adaptations shown by angiospermic plants for self pollination especially for autogamy 
let me tell you that cell pollination is also called as inbreeding you will come across these terms inbreeding outbreeding outcrossing in another chapter i think in enhancement in food production temporarily i want to tell you that inbreeding means the crossing between two closely related individuals or crossing between two closely related uh, individuals belonging to the same species anyway now here i am going to tell you some special adaptations some special characters shown by plants for the process of cell pollination atta ya thikani apan cell pollination manje ka he samjhun ghetlo cell pollination che don prakar konte te samjhun ghetle ata aplyala clear jhalay autogamy manje kay ani jaitenogamy manje kay आता काही एंजिओस्पर्मिक प्लांट्स मध्ये ऑटोगॅमी घडून येण्यासाठी किंवा सेल पॉलिनेशन घडून येण्यासाठी निसर्गत नॅचरली त्यांच्यामध्ये काही इनबिल्ट मेकॅनिझम दिसतं त्यांच्यामध्ये काही वैशिष्ट्य दिसतं त्यांच्यामध्ये काही खास अशी गुणधर्म दिसतात त्यांना आपण म्हणूया कंट्रावन्सेस फॉर सेल पॉलिनेशन और ऍडॅप्टेशन फॉर सेल पॉलिनेशन कंट्रावन्सेस और ऍडॅप्टेशन फॉर सेल पॉलिनेशन म्हणजेच काय की सेल पॉलिनेशन घडून येण्यासाठी अशा वनस्पतींमध्ये काही खास गुणधर्म दिसतात काही खास वैशिष्ट्य दिसतात काही खास रचना दिसते बघूया फर्स्ट कंट्रावन्स सो हिअर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द कंट्रावन्सेस फॉर सेल पॉलिनेशन कंट्रावन्सेस फॉर सेल पॉलिनेशन I told you just now that contravances means special adaptations, special characters for cell pollination. Vegla Varshya Madhya Manai Sa Zalu. Third, these are uh, inbreeding devices. Inbreeding devices. And the inbreeding Guru Nenya Sarki. Tatya Vanuspati Madhya Disnare Kai Vaishishta Purna Kundarma. काही वैशिष्ट्यपूर्ण कॅरेक्टर्स काही स्पेशलाइज्ड मॉडिफिकेशन सो लेटस टॉक द फर्स्ट कंट्रावन्स द फर्स्ट कंट्रावन्स इज होमोगॅमी और इट मे बी कॉल्ड बायसेक्शुअलिटी होमोगॅमी इट मे बी कॉल्ड बायसेक्शुअलिटी होमोगॅमी और बायसेक्शुअलिटी मीन्स हिअर here the plant produces bisexual flowers plant produces bisexual flowers you know bisexual flowers means the flowers with andracium as well as gynecium the flowers with stamen as well as carpel and listen and the maturation time of stamen and carpel is also same maturation time of stamen and carpel is also same it means it means it means whenever the anthers are ready anthers are mature at that time the stigma of carpel is also ready to receive that anthers do you understand i would like to use some example in some plants for this cell pollination they show some additional modification let me give example say in plant mirabilis jalapa it is the scientific name it is also known as four o clock plant in this mirabilis jalapa the flowers are bisexual look the flowers are bisexual that is the flower shows presence of stamen and carpel carpel now i already told you 
the maturation time of stamen and carpel is same and at maturity here look the filaments of stamen are slightly elongated filament of stamen filament of stamen is slightly elongated so at maturity the stamen it bend over the stigma stamen it bend over the stigma the stamen bend over the stigma so that the anthers are brought nearer to the stigma anthers are brought closer to the stigma and the pollen grain produced in the anther get directly deposited on the stigma and self pollination is achieved so homogamy another example here i would like to give in case of in case of say solanum tuberosum solanum tuberosum in this plant reverse condition is seen it means here here the flower is bisexual flower is bisexual that is with stamens as well as carpel but here the style of carpel is more elongated look style of carpel is more elongated and at maturity the carpel or style it bend in such a way that the stigma is brought closer to the anther stigma is brought closer to the anther so that the pollen grains which are ready in the anther can stuck easily to the stigma and pollination cell pollination is achieved so this contrivance is known as the homogamy kasha sathi cha he contrivance hai kasha sathi cha he khas gundharm hai for the process of cell pollination especially for the process of autogamy there is another contrivance let me tell you first homogamy or bisexuality second contrivance is clistogamy clistogamy here clistos it is a greek term clistos it stands for the closed and gamma stands for the marriage clistogamy means it is the contrivance in which flowers are bisexual but flowers remain permanently closed flowers remain permanently closed it means flower does not open at all so obviously as flowers does not open at all jar phulo open as hot nahi tar obviously tyas flower cha anther madhe tayar zalele pollen grain tyas flower cha stigma vat padtil ani cell pollination he ghadune this condition is called clistogamy क्लिस्टोगी इज फॉलोड बाय द जियो कार्पी पैल्दा मैं क्लिस्टोगी कुछ प्लांट्स मध्य संगत उदाहरण देते क्लिस्टोगी च उदाहरण है कोमेरिना बेंगालेन्सिस कोमेरिना बेंगालेन्सिस आता मैं हो तो दैट क्लिस्टोगी इज फॉलोड बाय द जियो कार्पी एंड यू मैट हेव नोटिस्ड in groundnut the seed and fruits are formed underground means what the flowers are born under the soil and they remain permanently closed does not open here i want to add one more term that is chasmogamy just try to understand the difference between clistogamy and chasmogamy actually in this contrivance in this adaptation the flowers remain closed only up to the attainment of maturity by stamen and carpel up to the attach up to the attainment of maturity by stamen and carpel jo parant stamen ani carpel mature hot nahi to parant flowers closed rahatat 
आणि ज्या वेळेला स्टॅमिन आणि कार्पेल मॅच्युअर होतात त्यावेळेला फ्लॉवर ओपन होतो आणि म्हणून या ठिकाणी चॅजमोयामी इज कन्सिडर्ड ॲज अ अडॅप्टेशन आयदर फॉर सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन और मे बी फॉर क्रॉस पॉलिनेशन इन कोमेलिना आय थिंक बोथ कंट्रावन्सेस आर सीन चॅजमोयामी ॲज वेल ॲज लिस्टोगॅमी ओके सो हिअर वी हॅव सीन अबाउट द स्पेशल कंट्रावन्सेस स्पेशल अडॅप्टेशन फॉर सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन नाव वी हॅव टू स्टडी सम ॲडव्हान्टेजेस अँड डिसॲडव्हान्टेजेस ऑफ सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन सेल्फ पॉलिनेशनचे काही ॲडव्हान्टेजेस बेनिफिट्स अर्थात काही फायदे आणि काही डिसॲडव्हान्टेजेस हे आपल्याला या ठिकाणी शिकायचंय सो नाव लेट अस टॉक अबाउट द ॲडव्हान्टेजेस अँड डिसॲडव्हान्टेजेस ऑफ सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी टू रिपीट वॉट इज सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन just now we have studied in very detail self pollination we know it involves single plant either single flower or maybe neighboring flowers but single plant so now let us see what are the advantages of self pollination first of all we can say that self pollination it is the शुअर मेथड ऑफ पॉलिनेशन इट इज अ शुअर मेथड ऑफ पॉलिनेशन मीन्स देर इज अ व्हेरी लिस्ट चान्स ऑफ फेल्युअर ऑफ पॉलिनेशन व्हेरी व्हेरी रेअर और व्हेरी लिस्ट चान्स ऑफ फेल्युअर ऑफ पॉलिनेशन वाय बिकॉज वी नो दॅट द सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन इन्वॉल्व्स सिंगल फ्लॉवर और मे बी द नेबरिंग फ्लॉवर्स म्हणजे सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन ही निश्चित घडून येणारीच प्रक्रिया आहे कारण सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन मध्ये आता आपण पाहिलं की पोलन ग्रेन्स त्याच फ्लॉवरच्या स्टॅमिन वरून त्याच फ्लॉवरच्या स्टिग्मावर किंवा नेबरिंग फ्लॉवरच्या स्टिग्मावर कॅरी केले जात असतात ट्रान्सफर होत असत आय एम सॉरी सो द फर्स्ट ऍडव्हान्टेज इट इज शुअर मेथड ऑफ पॉलिनेशन अँड देर इज अ लिस्ट or no or very rare chance of failure second second advantage that there is no chance of wastage of pollen grains there is no chance of वेस्टेज ऑफ पोलन ग्रेन्स नो चान्स ऑफ वेस्टेज ऑफ पोलन ग्रेन्स वाय यू कॅन अंडरस्टँड बिकॉज हिअर द पोलन ग्रेन्स आर ट्रान्सफर्ड फ्रॉम अँथर टू द स्टिग्मा ऑफ सेम फ्लॉवर ऑर नेबरिंग फ्लॉवर अँड दॅट्स वाय इन सच फ्लॉवर्स सेल्फ पॉलिनेटिंग फ्लॉवर्स द पोलन ग्रेन प्रोड्यूस्ड आर ऑल्सो इन लेस नंबर इन लेस क्वांटिटी थर्ड वी कॅन से दॅट the self pollination is not depend upon any external pollinating agent it is independent of external pollinating agent independent of external pollinating agent external pollinating agent such as we can say insects birds whatever it may be here external pollinating agent is not required third we can say that the self pollination is economic method it is economic method economic method in the sense here that flowers or that plant does not have to produce different devices to attract the insects or birds such as the large showy flowers or we can say nectar or scent that is a fragrance etc etc arthat ya thikane the flower la the plant la insects to a birds la attract karun ghenyasathi ji vegvegri devices garjechi astat ti tayar karnyachi garaj padat nahi so there is no chance of expenditure of energy to develop such devices to attract the insects and birds and that's why i say it is economic method again we can say that self pollination 
cell pollination it helps to maintain the purity of race purity of race and avoid the mixing of characters avoid mixing of characters very simple as here the pollination takes place between two neighboring flowers or we can say pollination it involves single plant so there is no chance of introduction of character of any another plant so there is no chance of mixing of characters means we can say the purity of characters is maintained in another words we can say it helps to maintain the homozygous condition also for desirable character you cannot understand it much more detail here we shall study about mendelism later on in another chapter at that time uh, we shall talk about that all part related with the genetics temporarily you just remember these are few of the advantages of self pollination self pollination it is a sure method of pollination and there is no or very less chance of failure second no chance of wastage of pollen grain and that's why the pollen grains produced are in less number third it is not depend upon any external pollinating agent fourth it is economic method it means the flower or plant does not have to produce different devices such as large showy flowers nectar scent fragrance etc to attract the insects birds etc and last cell pollination it helps to maintain the purity of race purity of characters in that particular race of that particular species of plants so here are the advantages but there are certain disadvantages also which are those let me tell you the disadvantages of cell pollination kahi tote ahe drawbacks ahe disadvantages first and most important first and most important due to repeated cell pollination due to repeated cell pollination the progeny gets weaker after every generation progeny gets weaker after every generation i am going to repeat due to repeated cell pollination the progeny gets weaker the new individual born gets weaker after every generation it is also known as inbreeding depression inbreeding depression it means due to repeated cell pollination due to repeated inbreeding there is a loss of genetic vigor loss of genetic vigor it means the progeny produced become weaker weaker and weaker in every generation they show low disease resistant capacity also there is a we can say low crop yield it affects the crop yield etc etc because of the low rate of germination of seed so the cell pollination has certain advantages as well as disadvantages so here we have seen about the cell pollination now we are going to study about the cross pollination i have already told you the basic difference between cell pollination and cross pollination cross pollination it always involve two plants it always involve two plants it means during cross pollination the pollen grains are transferred from one flower to another flower of another plant of another plant and that's why the cross pollination is also known 
as xenogamy xenogamy or it may be known as the allogamy try to understand the meaning of these terms xenogamy or allogamy here xeno this word stands for stranger strange or stranger and gamma stands for the marriage here pollination crossing and allo this word stands for the different gamma stands for the marriage means what cross pollination it is the transfer of pollen grain transfer of pollen grains from anther of one flower anther of one flower to the to the stigma of another flower stigma of another flower of another plant of another plant mostly of the same species mostly of the same species isn't it it means here the cross pollination always involves two plants two plants may be of different subspecies may be of different population may be of may be of same species okay but different varieties now here i have told you the meaning of cross pollination obviously due to cross pollination there is a chance of genetic recombination and it helps in the process of evolution ata ya thikani aplyala cross pollination mhanje ka he mi sangat hoto tachi vyakhya tumhala mi sangat hoto jasa atta aplya lakshat ala asel ki cross pollination madhe don plants involved hota so definitely the pollen grains are to be carried they are to be transported from one plant to the another plant but the pollen grains are non motile structure pollen grains are non motile structures means what the pollen grains does not have ability of independent movement they cannot move themselves they cannot move and they cannot reach independently up to another plant and that's why the pollen grains are to be carried from one plant to another plant by certain agents by certain agents that agents which bring about pollination he je veg vegre ghatak ahe ki je pollination gadun anta cross pollination gadun anta yacha artha eka plant kadun dusra plant paryanta pollen grains chi vahatuk karta tanna mhatla jata pollinating agents or we can say agencies of pollination pollinating agents or agencies of pollination or simply we can say different types of cross pollinators cross pollinators so here first of all we have to study about the different pollinating agents different cross pollinators different agencies of pollination which bring about cross pollination which bring about transfer of pollen grain from anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of another plant so let us talk about that agencies of pollination what does it mean i told you just now that agencies of pollination are nothing but these are different living and non living factors living that is biotic and non living that is a biotic factors which bring about the process of cross pollination let me tell you first of all the different biotic and abiotic factors which are those
बायोटिक फैक्टर्स और बायोटिक पॉलिनेटिंग एजेंट्स बायोटिक फैक्टर्स और लिविंग एजेंट्स विच ब्रिंग अबाउट क्रॉस पॉलिनेशन से वी कैन राइट हियर इंसेक्ट्स इंसेक्ट्स देन बर्ड्स बैट स्नेल स्नेक ऑल दीज आर लिविंग एजेंट्स ऑल दीज आर लिविंग एजेंट्स ऑल दीज आर बायोटिक एजेंट्स विच ब्रिंग अबाउट क्रॉस पॉलिनेशन एंड देर आर टू मेजर अबायोटिक फैक्टर्स अबायोटिक एजेंट्स अबायोटिक फैक्टर्स अबायोटिक इन द सेंस नॉन लिविंग निर्जीव सच एज सच एज द विंग एंड सेकेंड वॉटर सो हियर we have started the study of different agencies of pollination means the different living and non living factors living and non living agent which bring about cross pollination which help in the transfer of pollen grain from one plant to the another plant let me tell you when the pollination is carried out with the help of insects when pollination is carried out with the help of insects it is called insect pollination or entomophily entomophily here entomos stands for insects and philin stands for to love philin stands for to love actually here the meaning is pollination carried out by means of insects known as entomophily you might have learned somewhere a branch of zoology which deals with the study of insects is also known as entomology what is my point entomo stands for the insects when pollination is carried out with the help of birds it is called bird pollination bird pollination or it may be called as ornithophily ornithophily ornithos stands for the birds philin to love do you know ornithology study of birds a well known ornithologist of india dr salim ali isn't it my point is that ornithos stands for the birds pollination carried out by means of birds bird pollination when pollination is carried out by means of bat by means of bat it is called as the bat pollination or it may be called chiropterophily 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 here chira chira this word stands for hands teros stands for wings and philin stands for love temporarily pollination we shall talk about it later on once again when the pollination is carried out with the help of snails snails it is called melasiophily melasiophily here melasio this word stands for mollusk snake when pollination is carried out with the help of snake it is called as the ophiophily ophiophily ophios stands for the snake now wind pollination water wind and water you know these are abiotic factors non living factors when pollination is carried out with the help of wind called as wind pollination or it may be known as the anemophily animos stands for the wind and when pollination is carried out with the help of water it is known as water pollination or hydrophily hydrophily it means here 
I have mentioned actually again the types of pollination based upon the different agents which bring about that pollination. Now we people have to study in detail about entomophily, ornithophily, chiropterophily, animophily and hydrophily. Okay. So let us start the study one by one each that is insect pollination that is entomophily stands for the insects feline stands for the love it means pollination carried out by the agency of insects insect pollination there are number of insects which bring about cross pollination few of them I am going to tell you such as moths, wasps, beetles, butterflies, bees, etc. These are the different examples of insects which bring about cross pollination. But remember, out of all these different insects, the bees are considered as most active insect pollinator because in about 80%, 80% of insect pollinating flowers, pollination is carried out by bees. Now, the flowers in which pollination is carried out by means of insects are called as entomophilous flowers. Entomophilous flowers. Ja flowers madhe insects cha madhati me paragi bhavan pollination gadu neta asha flowers la entomophilous flowers manta. And here we have to study which are special characters, which are special adaptations shown by these flowers for entomophily, for insect pollination. Do you understand? Arthat, ya flowers madhe insects marfat pollination guru nina sati kai khas vaisishta dista, kai khas gundharma dista, kukhle khas adaptations dista, te aplala ya thikani thodkyaat samjun yai se. So let us talk about the adaptations or characters shown by entomophilus flowers. First adaptation. The flowers, the flowers are large, conspicuous, brightly colored with fragrance or particular smell nectar etc. The flowers are large conspicuous Conspicuous in the sense we can say easily detectable, easily noticeable. Yatsa artha kai ki kita karna insects la khu durun suddha, khu antaravarun suddha te flowers saza sahaji lakshat yave. So the flowers are large, conspicuous, these are brightly colored, these are brightly colored. They may have a nice smell as well as nectar. Ya pratyek avabad apanata ek 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 mudda bolna raho. Dusri goshta, in such flowers, the petals are mostly brightly colored. The petals are brightly colored. Out of different parts of the flower, phula che je veg veg ne bhaage, tya pae ki pramukhya ne je petals asta, te brightly colored asta. But in some flowers, if petals are small and not brightly colored, then 
other plant parts or other floral parts are large and brightly colored. Manje, जर कहीं flowers मधे petals से large and brightly colored नस्तील, तर plant चे इतर भाग, कि वह फुलाचे इतर भाग, say for example the bract or sepals, हे जे फुलाचे भाग आहे, ते large and brightly colored अस्तर. ऐसा साथी definitely to attract the insects necessary for the process of pollination. Next adaptation we can say that the small flowers, small flowers always bloom in the form of bunch. Small flowers bloom in the form of bunch. In the sense, if the flowers are smaller, generally they develop in the form of group. They develop in the form of bunch inflorescence in 11th we came across so that they can be easily noticed by the insects. Next, these flowers, these flowers produces a specific type of odor. Specific type of odor. Vishishta Gandha, Vas, Enchamadhe Tayarotu. Mind well, in some flowers, the odor is unpleasant, unpleasant, that is bad odor. And in some flowers, that odor is very pleasant, sweet fragrance, okay. So, that odor is not always pleasant, that may be the unpleasant. So, the entomophilus flowers, they produce a specific odor. Next, these flowers produce nectar. You know, nectar, it is a sugary material. Sugary material, sweet material secreted by the nectaries. Because you know that nectar, it is the main source of food for insects. And therefore, the insects visit the flowers just to take, to suck the nectar. So these flowers, they produce the nectar. Next character, we can say that the pollen grain produced are in very large number. Pollen grain produced are in very large number. Because definitely there is a chance of wastage of pollen grain or some of the pollen grains may be consumed by the insects. Therefore pollen grain produced are in large number. Also we can say the outer wall of eggs, outer wall of pollen grain that is exine is mostly spiny, rough or sticky. Spiny, rough or sticky. Let me tell you, in many entomophilus flowers, in many entomophilus flowers, the pollen grains are covered by some yellowish sticky material yellowish sticky material called as pollen kit. pollen kit. So such spiny nature, rough nature or such pollen kit, it helps to adhere the body of insects, to stuck the body of insects. He jamore pollen grains is sahaja sahajita insects sa shariyala chitta ve ani pollination sati kitakar marfat, insects marfat he dusri kade Carry Kelly is spiny, rough, or sticky. Also, one more point here I want to add that the stigma of flowers is quite sticky, it is large, so that the pollen grains can easily stuck to the stigma of that flower. In addition to that, in addition to these all characters shown by the entomophilus flower to achieve the cross pollination, in some entomophilus flowers, additional mechanism is seen. Let me tell you, salvia, in this plant, the flowers show a special mechanism called as liver mechanism. Here we don't have to discuss about it. Liver mechanism. Hmm? 
which facilitates for the cross pollination anyway so here we have studied about the adaptations or special characters shown by flowers to achieve insect pollination okay now let us move to the second that is ornithophily ornithophily pollination i have already told you ornithos stands for the bird and so when the pollination is carried out by means of birds it is known as bird pollination or ornithophily actually all birds does not perform pollination only few of the birds bring about the cross pollination say for example sun bird humming bird crow parrot bulbul maina these are the common bird pollinators and the flowers in which pollination is carried out by means of birds are known as ornithophilous flowers ornithophilous flowers ja flowers madhe ornithophily diste ja flowers madhe pollination he birds cha madatine ghadun anle jato asha flowers la ornithophilous flowers mhanta so we have to study the special characters shown by such flowers adaptations or we can say the characters shown by ornithophilous flowers i would like to give example bombax or bignonia again these are some common examples in which ornithophily that is bird pollination is seen so now let us talk about the special characters shown by these flowers first of all these flowers are again large and stout that is quite thick and fleshy it means all the floral parts flowers are very bhav they strong hai stout hai why because the floral parts should not break off should not wither away during the visit of bird so first character we can say that the flowers are usually large stout that is thick and fleshy second the corolla is funnel shaped or tube shaped funnel or tube shaped tube shaped in this manner suppose here is the corolla it appear just like a funnel or tube so that the birds can easily suck easily pick up the nectar which is generally found accumulated at the bottom of that corolla tube so corolla is funnel shaped or we can say tube shaped next character that the flowers are brightly colored very brightly colored flowers are very brightly colored that is the flowers are red orange yellow blue etc so that the birds can detect can notice that flowers from a very long distance also so we can say that flowers are brightly colored flowers 
are brightly colored. Next character we can say that these flowers produces abundant watery nectar. Produces abundant means in very large quantity watery nectar than the entomophilus flowers also. We have studied just now that entomophilus flowers also produce nectar that sugary secretion but here this ornithophilus flowers produces more abundant and watery nectar because it is also the source of food for many birds. One more important point these flowers are mostly scentless these are scentless without fragrance because the birds does not have well developed the sense of smell okay so these are few of the important adaptations or characters shown by ornithophilus flowers i am going to repeat within two minutes first i said ornithophilus flowers are large thick fleshy that is stout second the corolla is funnel or tube shaped third the flowers are very brightly colored that is red orange yellow blue etc flowers produces abundant watery nectar than the entomophilus flowers then we can say that flowers are scentless and examples I have already told you. That's all about the ornithophily or bird pollinations. Now one more that is bat pollination. Also known as chiropterophily. The meaning of chiropterophily, I have already told you. Here, chiro, this word stands for the hand, teros stands for the wings, and phili stands for the pollination. All of you are known that bat is the nocturnal flying mammal. Am I right? Bat is nocturnal flying mammal. It is a mammal. It belongs to class mammalia and it is nocturnal flying mammal nocturnal in the sense it is active only during night it remains hidden in the caves or dark places during the daytime and it comes out for the searching of food at night means it is active during night only and we know it is flying mammal and for that purpose it's Four limbs are modified into wing-like structures, also called as the patagium. Now, here we have to study the special characters shown by the flowers for bat pollination. And before to that, the chiropterophily is shown by the flowers known as chiropterophilus flowers. Chiropterophilus flowers. The flowers in which pollination is carried out by means of bat, chiropterophilus flowers. So, let us talk about the special characters, special adaptations. Now, here the pollen grains are carried or transported by means of bat. And the advantage is that the bats can transport pollen grains to a very long distance. That is, maybe up to 25 to 30 kilometers because it has ability of very swift flying and therefore it can transport the pollen grains for about 25 to 30 kilometers. Let us talk about the characters. First character again say that is flowers are large and very much stout large and very much stout that is all the floral parts all the parts of flower are very strong are very thick that is stout second 
these flowers are nocturnal nocturnal in the sense we can we can say that these flowers open during night only these flowers are dull colored does not have bright color no need isn't it dull color and these flowers produces fermenting fruity odor fermenting odor or we can say the rotten fruit like odor rotten fruit like odor that is fermenting odor which which can attract the bad which can attract the bad we can say it produces rotten fruity fermenting odor here the pollen grains produced are in very large number pollen grain produced in very large number one example is there that is of adenosonia here single flower of this plant single flower of this plant shows about 1500 to 2000 stamens look single flower shows near about 1500 to 2000 stamens so obviously large number of pollen grains are produced because that pollen grains may be consumed bad as as its food or there is a chance of loss of pollen grain and therefore large number of pollen grains are produced here these flowers also produces very abundant nectar abundant nectar is produced sugary secretion is produced okay so here we have seen about the characters of chiropterophilus flowers example i have already told you that is adan that is adansonia in addition to that caigelina pinnata it is another example here i am going to write caigelina pinnata okay so here we have covered the study of biotic agents ya dikane apan biotic agents sa abhyas purna kelela hai ata abiotic agents yacha artha kay non living agents you know there are two non living agents such as water and wind about which we shall study in our tomorrow's lecture so let us stop here